That's going to do it for us at 5. For Lonnie and the entire CBS2 News team, thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Raggy. And I'm Christine Johnson. The News at 6 starts right now. You're watching CBS2 News in high definition. Right now at 6, a Long Island man armed with a rifle under arrest for protecting his home from a suspected gang. Plus... I don't believe those of you in this room who voted for me sent me to Trenton to run a charm school. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie's straight talk about the changes he has planned for the Garden State. Then just as we approach the anniversary of the September 11th attacks, why a huge memorial to victims may have to be moved. Good evening, I'm Don Daly. And I'm Dana Tyler. We begin tonight with a Long Island man who says he was just trying to protect his family, but he ended up in jail. Police say he crossed the line by firing a high-powered AK-47 into his lawn. CBS2's Pablo Guzman has more on the protection controversy. Sunday night, George Greer says he had to use his rifle to stop what he thought was going to be an invasion of his Uniondale, Long Island home by a gang he thought might have been the vicious MS-13 as he was about to drive his cousin home. I went around and went into the house, ran upstairs, told my wife, call the police. Uh, they're trying to, you know, they're trying to attack. Greer says the five men dared him to use the gun and that their shouts brought another larger group of gang members in front of his house. He, you know, start threatening my family, my life. Oh, you're dead. You're dead. I'm gonna kill your, you know, your family, your babies, you're dead. So when he says that, 20 other guys come rushing around the corner and so I fired uh, four warning shots. Greer was later arrested. John Lewis is George Greer's attorney. What he's initially charged with, the D felony reckless endangerment, requires a depraved indifference to human life, creating a risk that somebody's gonna die. Shooting into a lawn doesn't create a risk of anybody dying. Greer says he knew Nassau County police employ the high-tech shot spotter technology in his area and that the shooting would bring police in minutes. Cops told me he was very cooperative. Greer also said he was afraid the gang outside his house was the dreaded MS-13. And Nassau County Lieutenant Andrew Mulrain, head of the gang unit, says MS-13 has 2,000 members in the county. Most organized gang that we encounter on a daily basis. You might think a person has the right to defend their home, but the law says physical force can only be used to stop physical force. Greer says he never saw anyone pull out a gun, so a court will have to decide whether he was right in firing his gun even into the ground. Police determined Greer had the gun legally. He has no criminal record, and so he was not charged for the weapon. From Uniondale, Long Island, Pablo Guzman. CBS 2 News. That shot spotter technology pinpoints where a gun has been fired within 35 feet. Police say it also detected two other shootings in nearby Roosevelt that night. A state investigation is now underway into the deaths of two men who fell down a manhole in Terrytown. Volunteer firefighters Anthony Ruggiero John Kelly died last night. Investigators say Ruggiero was working in the manhole as part of his job as a DPW foreman. He was checking a blockage in a sewer line. When he didn't come back up, Kelly went in after him. Both men were apparently overcome by toxic fumes. Kelly apparently not wearing a breathing apparatus when we, he went into the manhole to rescue his friend. 90% of these guys would probably do the same thing, unfortunately, not thinking. You want to get to your buddy. You got it. Investigators want to know if the men failed to use all of the proper safety gear. An intensive police manhunt in Brooklyn tonight for a rooftop gunman who shot and killed a delivery man who was just doing his job. Additional detectives have been assigned to the investigation as family members prepare to bury Jorge Martinez. Police say Martinez was shot and killed Friday night by someone firing a gun from a rooftop in Graveson. The victim's family is in deep mourning. I really miss my daddy. Really miss that like, he was everything for me, my hero, everything, everything. What we most loved, he was like always there, helped us. He worked, he died working f to help us. A wake for Jorge Martinez is set for tomorrow afternoon at the Rivera Funeral Home in Corona, Queens. His family's still trying to raise the money to send his body back to Ecuador for burial. Police in Manhattan released a sketch of a suspect in a frightening sex assault in Upper Manhattan. Investigators say the man targeted a female jogger in Inwood Hill Park last Tuesday morning. Police say he grabbed her from behind, fondled her, and ran off. The suspect is described as Hispanic, 25 to 35 years old, 5 foot 8, with a medium build and long brown hair. Last seen wearing green shorts, a white tank top, 
and gray sneakers. New revelations tonight about the mysterious money man behind the purchase of the so-called Ground Zero Mosque as two high-ranking politicians call for an investigation on the source of the money. Here's CBS2 political reporter Marcia Kramer with this exclusive story. The Egyptian investor who put up a large chunk of the money used to buy the building for the mosque and cultural center near Ground Zero owns a health care empire operating out of this Bronx building that is now under scrutiny by the state's Medicaid inspector general. If there's any credible information about wrongdoing, it absolutely should be investigated. CBS2 has learned that the facilities owned by Hisham El Zanotti, who gave mosque developer Sharif El Gamal money to help buy the old Burlington Coat Factory on Park Place, are, quote, on the radar, close quote, of the Medicaid inspector general for new audits. A previous audit done by the Inspector General for 2004 and 2005 of one of El Zanotti's establishments sought reimbursement for over $331,000 due to missing documentation or no documentation to support the claims. City Controller John Lou supports the audits. I think any kind of possible Medicaid fraud should be investigated to the fullest. Medicaid funding is absolutely critical for New York and we can't waste any of it on fraudulent or inappropriate Uses. Last week, we told you about how the State Farm Insurance Company had filed a multi-million dollar civil lawsuit against Mr. Elzanotti, claiming that he sought reimbursement for unnecessary tests on drivers and car accidents. With the evidence mounting, others think the State Attorney General Andrew Cuomo should take a look at where Mr. Elzanotti got the money to invest in the site. The Attorney General has a role to look at all of this stuff. You don't look at it any harder or any less hard because it happens to be a Muslim uh, facility. What you do is you look at it to make sure that the law is being observed. The lawyer for the mosque investor, Mr. Al Zanotti, says he's not surprised that there will be more Medicaid audits, but he says it's because the state has fiscal problems and they need to reduce the money they spend on Medicaid. In Lower Manhattan, I'm Marcia Kramer, CBS 2 News. Meanwhile, the NYPD is gearing up for new demonstrations for and against the mosque scheduled for Saturday. That, of course, is the ninth anniversary of the attacks on the Twin Towers. And as the anniversary approaches, CBS2 has learned that a Bayonne, New Jersey memorial to the victims might have to be moved to another site. <clears throat> Excuse me, as CBS 2's John Sattery reports, some local residents are steamed. The huge structure, Bayonne's 9-11 teardrop memorial, which has stood here for four years, may well be moved. It boggles your mind how they could move this. Frank Pertucci, who heads the 9-11 Bayonne Remembers Committee, is proud of the 10-story bronze monument that weighs 175 tons, whose official title is The Struggle Against World Terrorists. It shouldn't be moved. It should stay right where it is. It was put here to stay, and it should stay here, period. No two ways about it. The sculpture, a gift from the Russian people, is the work of Russian artist Zurem Serratelli. In 2005, then-Russian President Vladimir Putin attended the groundbreaking, and former President Bill Clinton attended the dedication the following year. The monument is located on a terminal owned by the Port Authority, which may sell the property to make way for a container port. Bob Terzi is opposed to any move of the monument. It has to be an eye shot of ground zero, because that's what the whole teardrop is about. It has to face ground zero. It's just disrespectful. Bob Terzi is a taxi driver who's gotten 800 signatures on a petition that opposes such a move. It would also relocate the monuments for the 13 Bayonne residents who perished in the attack. The artist is quoted as saying that if the monument is moved, it must be installed in another spot appropriate to honor those lost. In Bayonne, New Jersey, John Slattery, CBS 2 News. We repeatedly asked a Port Authority spokesperson for a comment, but so far the office has declined. An iconic symbol of the World Trade Center returns to its rightful place. Work crews at Ground Zero are hoisting two steel columns into place at the entrance to the September 11th Museum. The 50-ton columns, known as Tridents, were taken from the wreckage of the North Tower after the attacks and stored at Kennedy Airport. Mayor Bloomberg announced today that the $45 million museum below the Memorial Plaza will open in time for next year's 10th anniversary. Vice President Joe Biden will mark the 9th anniversary of the September 11th attacks here in New York. The White House announced today that Biden will attend the remembrance ceremony at Ground Zero. As for the president, he will pay tribute to 9-11 victims at the Pentagon. Tough talk from New Jersey Governor Chris Christie coming up. What he says it's going to take to change his state. Plus this. 
The price of coffee is at a 12-year high. Scott, thank you. Will you pay the price or give up the vice? And let's make a deal. Can the flight attendant arrested for going on a tirade aboard a JetBlue flight strike a deal to avoid jail time? Exclusive usually means unobtainable. Not at Raymore and Flanagan. Our exclusive brand, Bellinest, means beautiful furniture for everyone, where high quality craftsmanship meets great value. Luscious wood finishes, gorgeous fabrics, designs for every style, modern, traditional, beautiful, affordable, exclusive, and only at Raymore and Flanagan. If you were a candy man, Sweeter than sweet, which is sweet. Sweet million from the New York Lottery. Your best chance to win a million for a dollar. The New York Times says Eric Schneiderman has courage, a strong voice, and a deep commitment to ethical government. The Times endorses Eric for Attorney General for repealing the Rockefeller drug laws. For supporting women's rights. For promoting transparency. For curbing the power of dirty money. The Times supports Eric for his sound judgment. Legal expertise. Independence. Because he's a reformer. We all agree. Eric Schneiderman is the best choice for Attorney General. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie returns from the Labor Day holiday in attack mode. Christie is hitting the road in, a first, in the first of a series of town hall meetings throughout his state. As CBS 2's Christine Sloan reports, up first, education. Republican Governor Chris Christie didn't hold back as he pushed a series of initiatives at a town hall meeting in Packnack Lake in Wayne. Education and ethics reforms he says he wants the legislature to vote on by Christmas. I don't believe those of you in this room who voted for me sent me to Trenton to run a charm school. And I think over the first eight months, I've proven you right. Among the ideas the governor is pushing, pay for teachers based on their performance. New Jersey is one of the top states in education in the country. Nancy Brillo, an educator and mother of two, says the governor is destroying the education system by withholding aid to districts. My babies are just starting their educational journey, and Class sizes are going to increase, programs are going to be cut. Mother of two, Jamie DeVisser, supports the governor. I think that he's doing the right thing. I think that the teachers should be uh, merited every year. Christie also lashed out at the teachers' union for not agreeing to now, wage freezes. The union's response was that this was the greatest assault on public education in the history of the state because I asked them to take a pay freeze. And, you know, it's that kind of stupid stuff that they say that gives them no credibility with the public. Democratic legislators tell me they won't work on Christie's deadline and will take their time. This Lake community, the first of many town hall meetings for the governor in the next 100 days. He plans on speaking in Raritan Township tomorrow. The topic, ethics reform in the Garden State. In Wayne, New Jersey, Christine Sloan, CBS2 News. The governor also wants legislators to disclose their personal financial statements like he has, saying elected politicians shouldn't hold more than one government job. Hey, if you ride the subway between Queens and Manhattan, get ready for major service disruptions. Beginning today, the Manhattan-bound A trains will no longer be making stops at Beach 25th, 44th, and 67th Streets in the Rockaways. Queens-bound trains will no longer stop at Beach 90th, or 105th streets. Repairs are being made and the work is expected to take about a year. It's a Java jolt you weren't expecting. Still ahead, that next cup of coffee could be a real eye opener even before you take your first sip. Find out why. And Lonnie Quinn will be up with the forecasts. This is what I've got for us. I'm watching a cold front move into our area and I'm gonna tell you exactly how cool it'll be getting around here in my forecast after the break. Looking for a job? Recent numbers show New York's the place to land one. And CBS2 knows exactly what companies are looking for you. 86,000 openings, so many fields to choose from, even six-figure salaries. And we know just how you can score one tonight at 11. You give me the Ashley Furniture Home Store Big Event. Big savings on furniture store-wide. This modern sectional or reclining sofa at the biggest savings of the year, $5.99. Get to Ashley Furniture Home Store this week. It's too big to miss. Nobody intimidates our clients. Nobody. If you've worked on the books all of your life and now you're disabled and you can't work anymore, don't let anybody intimidate you. Call 1-800-66-D-I-N-D-E-R. Life is all about the choices we make 
And years ago, I made a choice about my type 2 diabetes. Diet, exercise, and pills alone weren't controlling my blood sugar anymore. I could have chosen to ignore this. Instead, I chose to listen to my doctor and added insulin to my treatment plan. Insulin is an effective way to lower blood sugar, and today there's an easy-to-use pen to inject it. Make the choice to talk to your doctor about whether insulin is right for you. For me, insulin's the right choice. Prescription Lantus is for adults with type 2 diabetes or adults and children 6 years or older with type 1 diabetes to lower blood sugar levels. Do not use Lantus to treat diabetic ketoacidosis. You must test your blood sugar levels while using Lantus. The most common side effect is low blood sugar, hypoglycemia, which may cause symptoms in some people such as shaking, sweating, fast heartbeat, and blurred vision. Severe hypoglycemia can be dangerous and can cause harm to your heart or brain. It may cause unconsciousness, seizures, or death. Don't use Lantus if you are allergic to insulin. Allergic reactions, including itching or rash, may occur, and some, though rare, may be life-threatening. Injection site reactions may occur. Don't change your insulin without talking to your doctor. Tell your doctor if you take other medicines. They can change the way insulin works. Don't dilute or mix Lantus with other insulins or solutions, as it won't work as intended, and you may lose blood sugar control, which could be serious. Ask your doctor if adding insulin to your diabetes therapy is right for you. The job is attorney general. It's not enough to be on the right side. It's about having the right stuff. You need somebody who will protect you and your families. I did that as a naval officer and a federal prosecutor. You need somebody who will make sure corporations play fair. I took on Wall Street giants they said couldn't be beaten and made them pay back billions to the people they'd hurt. And you need somebody with the independence and the guts to clean up Albany. I'm the only candidate who doesn't owe a thing to anybody except you. It's time to wake up Albany. It's time for coffee. The View, backstage for the 3,000th oh show, goodness. Next Insider. Wildlife experts are waiting for rabies test results on a coyote killed in Rybrook. We have exclusive video showing the coyote moments before it was shot. It was hunted by animal control officers after a two-year-old was bitten and a teenager nearly attacked on Sunday night. Experts say if you encounter one of these wild animals, make a lot of noise, don't turn your back, and if you have a rock, they say throw it at the coyote. The flight attendant who flipped out on a JetBlue flight is making a deal with the district attorney to stay out of jail. Steven Slater made a brief court appearance today for his famous meltdown last month when he cursed out a passenger and escaped from the plane by an emergency exit chute. Prosecutors are talking about a plea deal that involves a mental health evaluation and possibly community service. Beyond uh, stress-related uh... Uh, and mental health issues. It could go to alcohol, substance abuse. We hope to continue those discussions to favorably resolve this matter for Mr. Slater. He'd like to move on with his life. Slater no longer works for JetBlue. He's due back in court next month. Lonnie Quinn here. First day of school for a lot of children. Yeah. Nice weather they had. Nice. It felt like summer, but I hear that maybe later in the week <laughs> it's going to feel more like school season. <laughs> oh, no. What does that mean? Rain yeah. and chill. Uh, well, not so much the rain. I mean, we'll talk a little bit about the rain, but I think we're going to go, to go uh, closer to some fall-like numbers as opposed to these summer-like numbers we had today. Look at that sunburst right there. Boom. We had temperatures today right up around the 90-degree mark. A live picture right there. Skies are looking pretty, so let's talk about how pretty they are 82 degrees basically i'm not going to call it perfectly clear sunshine out there but a pretty nice looking sky now not a nice looking sky down around texas we have tropical storm Hermine, tropical storm Hermine has winds blowing at 40 miles per hour. So once it drops down to 39 mile per hour winds below that, you've got a tropical depression. And that's what we will have most likely by the 11 p.m. update from the National Hurricane Center. It currently sits and spins with a lot of rain, not so much the wind, but a lot of rain, 65 miles to the west, southwest of Austin, Texas. In our area, this is what Don was referring to, feeling like summer as the kids started that traditional first day of school. 89 degrees at 224 in the afternoon. Of course, 89 degrees at 224. I think down that's when they're about getting out, right? Oh, okay. Uh, 78 should be your normal topping off temperature. We were well above that record high of 101. Couldn't get close to that today. And as of right now, most of you in the 80s out there, a pretty good range. 80 in Walden will take you up to 88 in Mawa. But if you go out to Long Island, that's where you're going to find the 70s. 79 Westbury, 76 right now in Sayville. Skies, there's no problem there. Beautiful out there. Big picture shows us low pressure system spinning around northern Michigan. It's got an associated cold front, not a 
a real vigorous cold front, at least not in terms of wet weather. Don't expect a lot of rain. There will be a little bit overnight tonight into your morning hours, but then that pushes through. There's your air mass for tomorrow. Partly sunny skies. I think the bulk of the state tomorrow looks pretty good. It is going to be breezy out there. And then as that sun sets, we will mark the start of Rosh Hashanah. So let's give you that sunset time. It sets tomorrow night at 716. Temperature should be about 78 degrees and the skies will have some clouds, but really not a bad looking evening. So let's pull up your five day forecast. You can make sense of everything as you look at the numbers slide across the board. 84 tomorrow, that breezy, partly sunny sky. Then Thursday, 75 degrees, partly sunny. That's that cool air that we were hinting at. It will set up shop for Thursday. Stay with us for Friday at 77 degrees. Saturday, 79. Just seems like a beautiful temperature this time of year. That's about where you should be with a pretty sky overhead. 80 degrees on Sunday. Now, Sunday, we do have a 30% rain chance, and that is the race for the cure mm -hmm. in right. Central Park. Don't we encourage it. you to come out to Central Park at around 9 a.m. It starts at 9, Central you Park you. West and 77. 77th, and that rain right. chance I'm talking about is 30%. So that is not a rain out. We'll be there. We're we'll gonna be, be there. there. And it's it's Hermine, not to be confused with Harry Potter's best friend. Hermione. Hermione. All right. Sorry, yeah, I found out the other. Be clear on that. <laughs> <You> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Lonnie. An eye opener for all you coffee lovers. Soaring coffee bean prices mean you could mm -hmm. be soon spending more cash for that Java jolt. CBS 2 Scott Rappaport has the story. Coffee Java Joe. For millions, it's the lifeblood of the American morning. Vital. I can't live without it. But recently, coffee prices have spiked to a 12-year high. The maker of Folgers and Dunkin' Donuts coffee has already raised prices by 9%, and they're not alone. It's big in Greece, yeah. Actually, it's big in Greece, especially in this year. Here at the Port Authority Deli on 9th Avenue, manager Sammy Fidel says a case of Colombian coffee that used to cost him about $107 now costs him $127. That's 20 bucks more. And who do you suppose Sammy's going to have to pass the cost on to? Y-O-U. That's who. Soon, he says, a large coffee that's now a buck fifty here could go up to a buck seventy-five. At a cup a day, that's ninety-one dollars twenty-five cents more per year. His Folgers just went up a buck a can. His customers? They say it's too much. They say it's too much. The decision is no job, is no money in this time. At Empire Coffee and Tea Company, where they buy ten thousand pounds of coffee a month. Owner Paul Shayton says he'll pay $5,000 more next month than he did in September for the same coffee. He says he'll try not to raise prices, but that the good stuff always costs more. It makes it really difficult for a small business. At a coffee shop today, we ask customers if they'll pay the price or give up the vice. Oh, no, I won't stop drinking coffee, if that's the question. <laughs> it's just crazy. You know, it's time to move on. So if it goes up, see you later. I'll pay you if I have to. I gotta have it. Despite the price hike, that's brewing. Scott Rappaport, CBS 2 News. At one gourmet coffee shop, coffee shop, the owner tells us the price of coffee he buys has recently gone up by 50 cents a pound. Well, the Jets defense just got a little more caffeinated. <laughs> Sam Ryan joins us now for a look at what's ahead in sports. Sam? Yeah, big jolt. Revis Island on the mainland today. The Jets star cornerback back on the practice field with his team for the first time since ending his hold at Will Hear from Darrell Revis. That's next in sports. If you see news in your area, call our tip line at 1-800-CH2-NEWS. That's 1-800-CH2-NEWS. Hey, did you know that in the race for Attorney General, there's only one Democrat who's actually served as Assistant AG? Only Eric Danalo. Danalo's prosecuted corruption and violence, so we know he's not going to back down to Albany or the NRA. And as Spitzer's deputy, it was Danalo who led the fight to hold Wall Street accountable before it was cool. And only Danalo took on big insurance and got health care for 400,000 New Yorkers. That's why the Daily News is endorsing Danalo as the only one with the right experience for the job. For AG, go with Danalo. It's got to be in here somewhere. Got a real storage problem? Call Public Storage at 844 Store to get your first month for just a dollar. We can solve almost any storage problem with large and small units, moving supplies, and truck rentals, plus more convenient locations than anyone else. Visit publicstorage.com, call 844 Store, or stop on by. We're right up the street. Public Storage. Problem solved. Whew. Reserve now and your first month's rent is just a buck. Did you know one out of every eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer? Let's run it out of town. On Sunday, September 12th, save the date and help CBS2 celebrate 20 years of the Komen New York City Race for the Cure. Register at CBSNewYork.com. 
perfection, not an easy term to define. In an automobile manufacturer, it's Mercedes-Benz. In an automobile dealership, it's Mercedes-Benz of Morristown. From the moment you arrive, you'll realize this is the ideal place to join the Mercedes-Benz family. With creative and progressive lease and purchasing plans and an inventory of over 300 new vehicles to choose from, Mercedes-Benz of Morristown, the pinnacle of luxury automotive dealerships. 34 Ridgedale Avenue, Morristown, New Jersey, exit 36 off of Route 287 South. Call us at 888-THE-BENZ. Just minutes away. Could his idea for a Burn a Koran day put American troops at risk? We'll talk with the Florida preacher. Also, thousands flee as wildfires destroy homes in Colorado. Victims tell what it was like on the CBS EV News with Katie Couric. Raymore and Flanagan makes it easy to furnish your home. shop, plan a room, apply for instant credit, even get design advice. Great job, honey. The New York Times says Eric Schneiderman has courage. A strong voice. And a deep commitment to ethical government. The Times endorses Eric for attorney general for repealing the Rockefeller drug laws. I couldn't have said it better myself. Join us for your top stories. Plus traffic and weather together tomorrow morning starting at 4.30. Sam Ryan's here with your CBS 2 WFN Sports Report. I guess in team sports, no man is truly an island. No, that's true. <laughs> Revis Island, right? It's yes. just like riding a bike after missing all of training camp. Newly inked Daryl Revis back to work today. They star cornerback returning to the practice field, focusing mostly on his conditioning today. This coming less than 24 hours after signing his new four-year, $46 million contract. Oh, that arm was tired. As the team prepares for Monday night season opener against the Ravens, and Darrell is excited to get back to work. It's a relief as well because, uh, you know, I have, I have butterflies coming in here. You know, I was a little nervous. Uh, I haven't seen the guys in, in a long time. I mean, it was just a good feeling, and, um, yeah, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy right now. Do you expect the Ravens to go after you early on? I think so. Um, you know, I, I haven't, uh, you know, been in training camp, so I, I'm sure that's in their game plan, and um, um, I'll be uh, well prepared for it. They're smarter than that. They're not coming after them. No way. No chance. And he came in a tad bit heavier, about three to four pounds extra weight. The Giants meet time on the regular season schedule with Tuesdays off. Now New York hosting Carolina Sunday afternoon in its season opener at the New Meadowlands Stadium. Well, half of the women's quarterfinals set for today from the U.S. Open defending champ Kim Kleister's faces Samantha Stos Samantha Stosar. I should be able to say that name right now, right? <laughs> Tonight, as with the number three seed, Venus Williams currently down 2-1 in the first set against Francesca Schiavone. No problem there, right? As with the lone American remaining on the men's side, Sam Querrey facing Stan Vavarenka. Query with the nice winner tied at a set all. This one going to a fifth set where Vavarenka took over in the final few games. He sets up match point with that winner right there. Then finally breaks Query in the fifth to win it. There are now no American men remaining. Vavarenka winning at 7 6, 6 7, 7 5, 4, 6, 6 4. Baseball, the Yankees try to end a mini two game skid as they host the Orioles tonight. CeCe Sabathia trying to become a 20 game winner for the first time in his career. A surprise to some. There's a lot of things that have to go right to win 20 games. It just can't be dominant pitching. Most of the time you're going to be matched up against the ace. You also have to remain healthy. He's been able to do that. But I am a little surprised he hasn't won 20 games before. He could do it tonight, and in golf, he is back, and he's a captain's pick. Tiger Woods will indeed be part of the Ryder Cup team for the sixth time, but this is the first time he needed to be selected. The U.S. captain, Corey Pavin, announced his picks at the New York Stock Exchange today. In a surprise, he also selected 21-year-old Ricky Fowler. The captain, Pavin, spoke out about his selections. like guys that are playing well. Uh, that's important as well. Uh, I wanted to find guys that would round off the team and make it a team of 12, uh, not 12 individuals that, that are great players. I wanted 12 players that made up a great team. Ryder Cup, October 1st through 3rd in Wales. And the thing about the Ryder Cup that differentiates it from other golf tournaments is that it is a team sport, mm -hmm. and the players get each other going, mm -hmm. and they, they shout, they egg each other on. I think having a Tiger Woods and a Fowler on there is going to add a real interesting chemistry oh, to that team. Oh, we all team. remember Justin in Brookline a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. A decade ago. Yeah, a few years ago. <laughs> Time flies, doesn't it? Thanks. Great. Thanks, Sam.
All right, we're going to check in on what's coming up tonight at 11. Chris Raggy joins us from the newsroom with a preview. Hi, Chris. Don Corey Pavin on line two. You've just been selected. Oh, good deal. I'll go. <laughs> coming up tonight at 11, bus service battle is brewing after an unexpected policy change in a local suburb. Now a judge's order will force thousands of students to find another way to school. Tonight, parents rally to demand some action. Then jobs, jobs, and more jobs. 86,000 openings in so many fields to choose from. Even some six-figure salary jobs are out there in CBS2 with what you can do to score one of those old important jobs. Those stories and much more coming up tonight at 11. Don Dana. Thanks, Chris. That's CBS 2 News at 6. For Sam, Lonnie, and the entire CBS 2 News team, thank you for joining us. I'm Dana Tyler. I'm Don Daler. Up next on the CBS Evening News with Katie Couric, a Florida pastor plans to burn copies of the Quran, but could that endanger U.S. troops? Plus, how a program is teaching kids important.